Game Freak did an oopsie. Xbox did an oopsie. Reggie did an oopsie doopsie. Were Nintendo fans finally happy with the Direct or were they disappointed yet again? Let's find out. Oh, what a surprise! Let's talk about all of this and more. Sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to PewDiePie, and let's get started. <laughs> hey, beat mups! Hey, Woods! Oh my god, it's Billy Gunn! Before we get started, let's talk about the elephant in the room. 500,000 subscribers. I, I don't, I, ha, I have no words. All I really want to say is thank you, each and every one of you. Whether you hit subscribe or you just watch the videos, you hit like on the videos, whatever it is you do in your way of interacting with my channel, you helped me get to the point I'm at right now. The community in general around my channel has exploded and become something very special and something I hold dear and something I'm very proud of. But the Patreon community especially is just, it's, it's family. It truly is my extended family. And I couldn't have done it without them, without you, without the fellow YouTubers that have supported me, and just everyone. I'm just along for this ride, and I'm just happy to talk about video games for a living. I am finally back from my trip to California. I went for SoCal Retro Gaming Expo. I was there for the weekend. It was like two or three days driving up, two or three days driving back. I got not but two hours down the road. And Reggie announced that he was retiring. And of course, my Twitter, my YouTube, my, my everything blew up with people asking me to talk about this. But I think most of the internet had you covered. If you had woken up that morning and you didn't know that Reggie was just retiring and you looked at your subscriber feed or any news feed, you might have think Reggie had passed away. I mean, some of those thumbnails that were popping up in my subscription feed, I love you, Arlo, but come on, man. The guy's just retiring. He's not dead. Thankfully, Reggie is still alive and kicking. He is just retiring. Very early retiring. Right? In his 50s, right? And I say good for him. He did some really amazing things with the company. I love him. It's obviously sad to see him go, but he is going to go and spend more time with his family, and ultimately, I just want him to be happy. And it does make things a little bit easier, knowing that Doug Bowser is taking the keys. Change is very often scary, and with a name like Bowser, it makes you wonder exactly what his plans are with the company of Nintendo. But if you didn't know, apparently Doug Bowser was the main guy behind the marketing for Nintendo Switch. And obviously, if you've been paying attention, Nintendo Switch's marketing was incredible. That's why the system has exploded and gotten to the point that it has gotten to. You take a look at the Wii U marketing, and it was just freaking horrible, and that's why that system failed. So going into this new system, the Nintendo Switch, Doug had his work cut out for him. It is in no small part because of Doug Bowser that we're here today talking about the Nintendo Switch, having it be as successful as it is. But Reggie, I know you're not watching this. <laughs> I'm not a religious man, but God bless you. I hope you have a fantastic retirement. Say hello to your family for me. I just wish you the best and, that, and the most happiness you can possibly have in life. I will say... I'm a little upset that I never got to meet you. I, I do hope that one day I can because I do really want to meet Reggie and it feels like everyone around me got to meet Reggie. All my friends got to meet Reggie. There was one time, like four years ago, I was invited to the Nintendo headquarters in Seattle. I got to go and explore the facility. I got to see things I wasn't allowed to record. It was a very exciting opportunity and I got to see Reggie's office door. And I was told to not go through the door because Reggie was busy and I was not to disturb him. That's the real Reggie oopsie. I love you, Reggie. Thank you for everything. What you doing? Watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine on Netflix. I thought it was on Hulu. Well, that's in America. See, right now, we're in Canada. Stupid. See, I don't know how many of you know this, but Netflix in different countries have different stuff. Like, Australia and Canada has Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And you would think, well, that's cool, but how would I watch that? Using ExpressVPN, you can actually change what country you're in, which is really cool for a lot of reasons, but that, that's my favorite reason. And it's less than $7 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you blow through all those Netflix shows in 30 days, get your money back. Probably shouldn't say that. 
If you, like myself, and many others around the world want to take back your internet privacy today, you can find out how to do so by clicking on that link in the description box or going to, as I said, www.expressvpn.com forward slash beat'emups. What do I have to say it again? Yes, I do, because they told me to. www.expressvpn.com forward slash beat'emups. What happened to your voice? You made me sick. That's what happened to my voice. Yeah. I think that's it, actually. Well, that's good, because you sound like a frog. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go back to watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Wait, no, I can't. i got to make my video. Let's talk about the Game Freak Pokemon Oopsie Doopsie. And I'm not, I don't really think it's an, it's an oops, whatever that even is. I'm going to stop saying it. I'm just being stupid. However, a lot of people are disappointed about this. Let's look at it. <laughs> so I woke up very early this morning, seven in the morning is way earlier than I usually wake up to live stream this thing. And it was very exciting for me. I remember being in grade four, whatever year that was when I was a tiny little munchkin and all the classes in my little home area, there was like five classes, all the teachers banded together, put us in one room, slept the first episode of Pokemon on the TV. I don't know why they did this. And most of us who hadn't seen this before got to experience Pokemon for the first time. And that was my first first taste of Pokemon. So every time a new generation is announced, it takes me back to that moment. And I and I remember that first time I saw Ho-Oh fly across the sky. And I think my stunned face throughout the entire seven minutes of this direct speaks for itself. So before I give my honest thoughts on this, I want to say that personally, I loved it and I'm excited. It didn't move in the direction I wanted it to move in. I was really hoping they would take the franchise and evolve it, pun not intended, but I don't feel like they did that. I feel like they made a traditional Pokemon game like we've seen eight times before, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I love Pokemon, so I'm going to enjoy this. And I might be wrong, but just from what I've seen online and throughout my live stream, the overwhelming opinion on this is that it was disappointing, which I think is kind of ironically hilarious because even before Pokemon 2019 was announced to be in development for the last like two, three, four years, I don't even know how long, ever since the Wii U when I was talking about why don't we have a big current generation Pokemon game on the home system, I've been talking about this for as long as I have been on YouTube and that is not an exaggeration. And I've had the same mindset the entire time. Give me a home console version of this game, an open world game where I can actually see the Pokemon out there in the wild and I can go and catch them. Imagine like Skyrim but Pokemon version. Breath of the Wild Pokemon version. And then this one was announced with that teaser and so I gave my opinions on what I wanted and of course people didn't like it. The overwhelming response I always got back when I talked about changing the formula, when I talked about seeing the Pokemon in the wild, when I talked about it not being a traditional Pokemon game was don't mess with my Pokemon. There was a lot of people on board with me, but for the most part, people didn't want it to change. They wanted to see 3DS Pokemon on the Switch. Don't mess with it. Keep it the way it is. Of course, we saw Let's Go come out, and they made some pretty small changes, to be honest. Everything was a very small change. Little niceties here and there, like being able to see the Pokemon in the wild. I felt like we were moving forward. The only real big change was obviously how you catch Pokemon, and people hated that, of course, but they even hated the little small changes. They wanted traditional Pokemon. They hated that it wasn't exactly like yellow. I'm not sure who they is, but you get what I'm saying. People weren't happy. Like, that was a whole conversation on the internet. 2019 Pokemon better not be like this garbage. That, right? Am I wrong? Is that not the response people had? And here we have a brand new Pokemon game. A new generation, a new system, shield and sword, stupid names, but we have it and it's exactly like the old Pokemon. And what is the overwhelming response? They didn't change the formula. <laughs> They're not evolving the series. It's not open world. You can't see the Pokemon anymore. It's back to random encounters. It looks like 3DS Pokemon. Why aren't they doing anything new? Where were you guys? Where were you the last five years on my videos? Where were you? A lot of people are saying Nintendo are playing it safe. No, I feel like Nintendo are listening and making the game everybody wanted and now everyone is complaining that it's not the game they wanted. And I mean, it's not the game I wanted, but I'm, I, I, I'm not complaining because 
I thought this is what you guys wanted, and I'm just happy to have a Pokemon game. <laughs> it does look a little more open. It seems like there are these really big areas. However, they're all locked behind these camera angles. I mean, there's one shot of this huge hill with trees in the background, and at first glance, it's kind of like, wow, look how big and open it is. But then if you look down, there's a barrier, there's a fence, and you clearly can't walk past that fence. And there's probably just a locked camera angle on this little area where you can see the background. That's what I'm assuming by looking at this. Every bit of gameplay footage where a character is moving, it looks like they're stuck on this one little path with a locked camera angle, just like the 3DS games. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, it's just a very short trailer, but that's kind of the feeling that I got by looking at it. It just looked like, you know, what we're used to. Which again isn't a bad thing. We've been enjoying Pokemon for the last however many years, and we'll keep enjoying it now. Hopefully. I don't like the names though. That's the, and I'm completely unapologetic about that. Sword and Shield. I like the color scheme. You know, red, green, blue, silver, gold, black and white. And Sun and Moon, while they weren't inherently colors, it still felt like light and dark. But Sword and Shield, like Pokemon Sword and Shield, like I don't use a sword in Pokemon. I don't, I don't use a shield. I know it's like attack and defense, but I don't know. There's something off about it. Maybe it'll make sense when I play the game, but the logos, the way they look with the little dragon head on top, it looks like fan art. Like if I had seen this leaked a couple months ago, I would have assumed someone mocked this up and it was clearly just a fake fan art that wasn't very good. However, I do think the whole attack, defense, sword and shield thing does play into this stadium coliseum arena that we saw in the trailer. And then on the map, you also see the coliseum him right at the top. So it seems like the focus here is getting to some kind of battle arena, some kind of big coliseum for this amazing battle duel competition thing, I'm guessing. There seems to be more of a focus on battling in this game, and that I definitely like. Okay, I don't super look forward to talking about this next part because I'm not sure how all of you are going to feel about it, but the start of Pokemon. Oh boy. Maybe it's just the way they're 3D rendered in this trailer. Maybe it made them look a little weird and maybe when we see them in the actual game they won't look as plain? L uh, look, I really like the grass monkey. I think he looks cute and he's probably gonna be the one that I go with. I do like the little blue lizard water thing, Flobble or whatever, I don't remember names. <laughs> I think he looks cute. I also think he's a reskin of Mudkip. And then the, the bunny. I mean, I have never seen such a plain looking Pokemon before. It just kind of looks like a bunny that they just kind of colored in red in some places. It looks really default and it, it's just not charming. It's not cute. It has a little bandaid on its nose as if to try and give it some kind of personality but it, it didn't really accomplish that, kind of just looks dumb. Hopefully it evolves into something pretty cool looking because yeah, it, it does not, it does not look, it looks boring. And it's funny, in my live stream I actually said, I, I feel like I've seen all of these Pokemon before somewhere. And then one of my Patreons mocked up these graphics, actually, I think he, I think it was him, unless I got confused. I'm sorry if it came from somewhere else, but actually taking certain parts of certain Pokemon and, and smashing them together and it actually made these new Pokemon and it made me realize, yeah, I have seen these Pokemon before. It's like a mix of two or three different Pokemon. I, I mean, it would be hard at this point to come up with new ideas. I mean, there's so many Pokemon, you gotta give them some leeway, but it does seem a little bit like they didn't even try. Maybe there's some kind of Pokemon rule or some kind of Pokemon lore that I'm not aware of, but does it have to be fire, water, and grass every time? But wouldn't it be cool to have three different starters for a change? And wouldn't it also kind of just make the game feel fresh and new, like you're starting with a new element for once? You gotta imagine it wouldn't be as hard to come up with new original starter Pokemon if you're not tied to the same three elements all the time. I just want like one Pokemon game that starts with Psychic, Dark, and Dragon. So I do think I'm, I'm somewhat disappointed in the starter Pokemon uh, uh, other than the Tree Monkey which looks really cute but I'm yet to play a Pokemon game that disappointed me. I know I wanted similar things from Sun and Moon, I wanted similar things from Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, like I, this is what I always want but every time I end up playing one I end up having a good time, loving it, and feeling like a kid again. Pokemon's Pokemon, my buddy is ready. Rest in peace, Reggie. <laughs> but what do you guys think? I would love to know your opinions down below if you like this video or you learned a little something, or you just want to push that subscriber number closer towards a million. Make sure you have flip all over that subscribe button. Click or tap on this video right here because I'd really appreciate it. Now I wanna be the very best, like no one ever was. <laughs>